Hi everyone, welcome to the lab. Today on my bench I have this Siglent electronic load for repair. I was told it doesn't power up, let's have a look. Here is the back of the unit. And the reason I didn't try to power it up myself yet is that I noticed something here. Do you see how these two connectors are not sitting straight in the holes? And it seems like the board underneath is bent up here. And there is a screw here on the bottom, just like this one on the top. And I suspect that someone used the longer screw there by mistake. I think we have to check this out before trying to power this thing up. Right, look at this. This is size 10 and this is size 20. Unscrewed and this is probably the right one and this is way too long. So I took the cover off and so far I found one more longer screw here on the front. All the rest are shorter ones. And unfortunately there is no way to see the board here. So I will have to take it further apart to check the board if it's damaged or not. Here is the top view and I don't see anything wrong from here. So I believe I will have to take the board out to check. Here is the board. And there is definitely some damage here. But it seems to be limited to the Ethernet port LEDs. So hopefully it is not too bad. Take a closer look here. It seems like the screw damaged free traces go into these two LEDs. And look at the board. It's bent a bit. Unbelievable. And here is the other side. The damage is right here between the connectors. It seems like nothing else is damaged, just those three traces to the LEDs. I put the board back into the chassis with just a few screws to test. Let's try powering this thing up. Oh, it does power up. Let's see if it boots. Yes. Buttons respond. I'm not sure why this thing was described as not powering up. I suppose this is good, but the repair video is not very interesting, I'm afraid. I still need to fix the broken traces and test some more, but so far looks good. Let's give it a go. I set this Agilent supply to the maximum it can do, 20 volts and slightly more than 2 amps. Let's enable the output. We read 20 volts here and this thing is set to 0 0.2 amps. Let's start with that. No problem. So let's increase that. 0.3. No problem. 0.5. 1 amp. Two amps. Looks fine. Here is my repair under the microscope. One trace survived, so I repaired the other two. I'm going to apply this UV curable solder mask over this repair just to make it more stable and look better. Here is the result. Not a match in color, but not a big deal. Good enough. I'm trying to test, so I connected this thing to my network, installed software, and I can see this unit. And this LED is okay, 
but I don't see this one at all. I think something is wrong with it. So I took the board out again to check connections from the LEDs. There is nothing wrong with connections at all. This is the Ethernet transceiver chip 83848KSQ. I looked up the datasheet. The LEDs are connected to pins uh, 21 and 22 through these two resistors, 220 ohms. The common of the LEDs is connected to 3.3 volts and this chip is supposed to pull them to ground to light them up. And I see that pin 22 is fine. This is a link LED. It lights up when I plug in the Ethernet cable. But uh, pin 21 does not light up. This is speed LED. It should be on for 100 Mbps and off for 10 Mbps. And I have a gigabit switch. So I believe it should light up, but it doesn't. And I think it's time to stop worrying about this. I see that the chips are available on Mauser for less than $3 a piece, but I doubt it makes any sense to bother. No one would look at this LED anyway. I don't know where the longest screws should be, but they seem to fit fine on the front bottom. Here we can see one of them sticking up. So here it is, back together. Thanks for watching. Bye.